Hello, my name is Koray Tuber Kibir and I am the owner and founder of Holistic SEO and Digital. In this video, I will explain and demonstrate two different websites with the semantic SEO. And at the same time, I will try to explain the concept of the query semantics and a little bit the different, its difference from the lexical semantics as well. In some of the previous videos, I actually mentioned that I will launch a semantic SEO course still I am trying to actually arrange some conditions while waiting the world to be ready and before these launch I will publish many different SEO case studies if you just read and watch these videos I am sure that you will be successful in the semantic SEO course as well and you will get a certificate because in semantics it's not like technical SEO as I say there is no determined or predetermined documentation it doesn't use a universal language linguistics and natural language processing it is highly complicated area without a single center and especially when it comes to understanding a semantic search engine is way much harder so with that said if you want to learn when it is published or when it will be published just subscribe to this holistic seo newsletter and then actually when i publish these case studies or the when i launch the website for giving the semantic seo course to you you will be uh, you will get the news besides that Probably if you watch these things, I guess I will be all this uh, article will be already published. But the thing is, <coughs> if you check this project and this one, they are actually coming from the same environment. This one is a product search engine. In other words, it is a little too unique because uh, how can I tell it? It is too unique because it is a product search engine, but beyond that, because it doesn't sell something online, it just tells users to search this thing online and then go to a specific store and just try it physically. So they try, they have to track all of the physical uh, storage or they have to understand the stock information so that they can tell you that, yes, if you like these shoes, you need to go to this store from this city in this area and it will be open on until to the death point so this is this kind of uh, search engine in other words it is really unique search engine so as an seo it is also a good feeling that you are doing actually search engine optimization for a search engine design which is a unique new search engine type and i like actually doing that and i can show you the results here too once i published actually this tweet by telling that there is no discipline in the client because the client didn't even realize that they launched the project without perfect conditions and anyway <clears throat> this was a quick launch a quick increase as you see suddenly and this is the initial coverage report i can publish these things easily because it won't harm the project because most of this data is already outdated and i'm sure that you won't be able to create same type of website and here too uh, these are the updated results nearly updated results let's say from the hrefs as well when it comes to this one this is also important too because this project is a b2b e-commerce but to be able to be successful on the search engine optimization, sometimes you have to augment the queries and you need to connect them to the, your own context. That's why it is important to understand the query semantics because this project is for gift selling, but not for the users or consumers directly. It is actually for uh, B2B selling with a really big amount of uh, materials or the product counts. So the problem here is that no one searches it properly even if they search it they just search maybe 50 60 queries with a certain type of phrases phrase combinations but when it comes to turkey since this is a touristic country you have we have many cities many touristic environment and all these gifts are actually they actually have touristic team so to be able to connect these cities to the tourism then to the touristic gifts and then to the b2b selling you need to understand the importance of the B2C there and also importance of the uh, importance of the objects that will appear in the in the gift objects as well. So in this case, you can't directly go there and uh, create a B2B website. You need to change or balance things from the search engine point of view so that they can actually see you as a candidate there. So in other words, if someone searches for taking a single gift, for from let's say Antalya 
with a specific type of team with a specific type of object or something it means that actually you have to con you have to be connected to that user so that you can also be connected to the users that actually want to buy uh, b2b products or uh, let's say purchase maybe even two millions of Antalya related uh, gift products so the another problem here is that even if the, a person actually is uh, or let's say has b2b business still they don't use actually these type of queries because they are the consumers and also b2 business owners they usually use the same queries and search engine can't always predict who is who or why the person actually searches it that's why they have to look at the user demand and predicted user profiles so in this case of course user clustering and query clustering and matching queries to the users these are also important subjects but we can talk about audience clustering maybe later in this project to be able to rank for B2B queries, I had to create actually a direct to consumer website first and then I needed to tweak the selling funnels or let's say sale funnels and also some buttons even or pricing methodologies or other things. Because if you go to the product pages of this website, you will realize that you can even order 100,000 of props or items suddenly or you can just buy one too so it is actually selling to the consumers but they are not the main target there the problem as i say is query semantics because when it comes to b2b gift related searches it's too less the search demand is too less and they are so blurry there is no specific type of border or search behavior differences between dif these two different distinctive audiences so it means that we need uncertain inference and then we will need to cover all these contexts that will come from these queries this is the result from the hrefs and this is the from the SEMrush and this is from the google search console data as you know i actually published these things for balancing the page rank by explaining cost of retrieval, link value proposition, and information responsiveness uh, related things. And cost of retrieval also will be explained later too. These are some of the initial results. I can tell that project is really, really slow because both of the projects have highly technical SEO problems and there is not enough level of, enough level of, let's say, uh, author force let's say in this case and this is jewel.com uh, it is around here as i i can tell that actually if you go to the this area you will realize that it has actually zero domain rating from according to the hrs but these are the initial metrics there are some problematic things with these websites i actually explained them into these aggregated and curated background of subject websites with seo problems you can read these areas to understand why they were slow why there there were some other things but i can tell that with these conditions without any kinds of link or page rank I believe these things are creating good results and there was a strong ontology and taxonomy to create a, a proper website tree and especially when it comes to gr.com the main problem was actually URL structure because we can't use coordinates in the URLs so that we shall not create millions of endless URLs to the search engine in a without a meaning if you do that as Bing says here, user demand is important thing to understand whether there is a, actually a kind of spam or not. If you create too many pages without any kinds of user demand, search engine might assume that it is actually spammy web pages that can be generated by a machine. When it comes to Google, if there is no user demand or proper user demand, they assume that it is an unpopular topic, but still it doesn't mean that it might not it might not be perceived as spam too so it means actually you are not entirely in the safe zone besides that there are some other things of course i need to mention uh, so let's read some questions together then we can try to answer them as well what is query semantics why is it necessary how do search engines use query semantics why is query semantics important for b2b industry why is search demand matter for anti-spam algorithms why do search engines need to need to variate meanings what is the difference between lexical and query semantics and how to evaluate query semantics for some rare SEO projects? So query semantics, 
It means that actually the meaning of the query changes according to the query language. The query language concept comes from actually Cranfield experiments. Cranfield experiments, maybe I can find them. Because in Cranfield experiments, the users, this is one of the first information retrieval researchers, and it is highly important actually even for today's information retrieval systems. And in the Cranfield, yeah, here, the query language has been used, and it is the first actually. Uh, exploration of the query language. Basically, how you search is your query language, and in the query language, we don't use meaningful sentences in as in the natural language. We you write, just write certain phrases side by side, and we expect machine to fill the blank areas, which actually brings us to the, this concept, which is uncertain inference, because every, according to uncertain inference, we always need a knowledge base. I won't go or dive in here, because I have explained it, I believe, before I believe I explained this thing already. So if you just try to read a couple of Bing uh, blog posts, you can see that actually they are uh, useful as much as Google's own blog posts. But basically query semantics means that every query changes its context and the meaning according to the every signal and denot denotational note or uh, structural, syn synthetic and also semantic unit uh, or lexical unit uh, even their orders can affect actually the relevance and search engines have to actually generate questions sentences or inferings inferences from from your queries or queries in the query languages it is necessary because search engines have to understand the possible contexts once they understand these contexts they have to actually prioritize them and then they have to match these contexts that come from queries to the contexts from the documents let's say with five percent this is the context of the query but in this document let's say 30% of the document is about this co specific context. It means that actually if this section is too early in your document, you will, you will need to lose the rankings. You have to parse the query as the search engine parses, then you have to match every contextual section or unit according to that as well. And with that said, there will be many other things uh, in this area, to be honest. For example, here, when you look at to do, this research actually it comes from Google, uh, let's say, not entirely Google, but it is a mutual project actually in the Google research publication section, you can find it. And this section actually is not directly about uh, the search engines, but it is about the search. And they explain what RDF is and why, how to use it for actually query language and query by example here actually. They try to take the examples and they try to connect all these samples to the queries and then they try to create a taxonomy between these things so that they can understand what part of taxonomy is a better match for your query. You can actually match these things with my uh, example too. When it comes to the resource description framework, you already know it from the structured data. We usually use actual different formats, but you can also check this. And uh, there are some other examples here in this section too. If you just check actually W3, they will explain you what a query is, why it is important for semantic web. You can use actual W3 uh, consortium as a information source or basic information source. It will help you. You can understand what a triple or what a pattern is here. And with that said, this is the Google research publication that I just showed you there. And at the same time, when it comes to the semantic queries, this is also important uh, in a way because sometimes you can use these knowledge bases. Some of these knowledge bases are actually for creating applications, but in this case, if you want to create, let's say you want to understand the search engines, it doesn't mean that you should create one, but at least you can try to have an empathy with the search engine engineers. That's why these knowledge bases are actually important. Before coming to that area, actually, this is also an important uh, blog post, again, from the Google to explain how AI helped to do Bing to have better query understanding. And there are some samples here. For example, when you search for Windows Update Reset Tool before and after, they try to show actually how the results change according to the semantic, uh, semantic relevance. And they also explain how these things actually can be used in other cognitive cognitive search as well and here actually they also explain how you can create your own semantic search engine and how you can weight the different types of places on the web pages or how you can actually parse the queries and etc it's up to your own configuration 
But besides that, from actually Microsoft Bing, this is highly important, another uh, post to understand the query semantics. Because when it comes to the query semantics, you have to understand that a, a word will definitely change its meaning from in, in, in a dictionary. A, let's say something is synonym with something, it doesn't mean that it will be the same in the query language. Sometimes it might, sometimes it might not be. Sometimes it might be in that way if a third another concept appears them appears there with, together with them. So here when you search for how long does a canned soda last, canned, canned diet soda, soft drinks also come there, unopened room temperature pop also comes there, carbonated drinks come there. So according to the Microsoft being canned soda, and these things are synonyms to each other or interchangeable phrases. So in this case, you have to understand that actually these relevances also come from word to vec models and glovy type of things and they try to understand what is the canonical query according to the query format and at the same time concepts in the query there are other things here to explain the character embeddings if you want to understand the prominence of the character embedding i would suggest you to check these two parts it will be helpful to understand how it increases the precision even further so uh, I believe these sections uh, explain them, but doesn't end there because enriching query semantics for code search. The code search, it goes richer every year. And now even actually Google uh, for transformers or Google language models, the code generation is another NLP task or language model quality task or benchmark as regular natural text generation. In other words, when you say something, the machine needs to write the code in a certain programming language. So this is about that and how we can actually match or transfer human language to the code language or programming language. This is about that and query semantics here, it is needed because if someone searches or if someone actually tries to generate code, in, in as in the query semantics it will be harder and here they try to understand the semantic gap between them so uh, i believe i have explained the query semantics and why it is necessary because search engines will need to associate cluster and also predict the every meaning every context of all these possible inferences that come from the queries and they will need to distribute these possibilities to the audiences according to the user demand they will need to match the documents according to that and sometimes document popularity might affect the query context if there is not enough level of user behavior or user data so that because search engine will assume that if if the query search demand increases, then these type of documents suddenly appears. It means that these documents are directly for these type of queries as well. So in this case, when I create my own content briefs or semantic content networks, I have to remember these type of possibilities so that I can put my source in front of others, especially for these type of seasonal SEO events because they will show who is more quality and who is more needed on the SERP or on the web. And uh, why do search engines need to variate the meaning of the phrases in the query? Because first of all in the query every word has multiple other types of meanings and a search engine needs to always actually change the meaning of these things because the context always changes. So a word might have nine different contexts but when you put another word before or after it, this con con there might appear some context constraints. And according to these context constraints, the search engine will need to start actually filter these documents. But as you know, serving all these documents faster or faster and faster is more and more important in this case a search engine might start to realize that instead of filtering these things out already we can actually register every document to do a different indexing shard or index petition or partition so in this case we can actually serve them faster it means that actually documents might change their places in the indexes or indices and this might happen according to the query context so that's why actually having a contextual consolidation is really really important and the document here the searching with the context here it actually explains many uh, different types of possibilities and explanations here i will suggest you to read this document or this paper to be honest because uh, especially rank biasing or query writing query rank biasing besides that 
how these iterative uh, search processes, how they can actually change ranking with every iteration. It is also important for understanding the cost of these things as well. And also it is important because sometimes uh, search engines might not choose every word in the query to rank the results. Sometimes even if you delete a word from the query, results don't change, right? So it means that actually it is not a contextual word or it is not a necessary word. It doesn't have a weight in the query. Here they explain how other queries can be generated according to the context. And difference between lexical and query semantics is that the in the lex lexical semantics come from natural language, query semantics come from search language or qu search query language. In this case, as I say before to selling and buying, they might be antonyms in the dictionary, but they are synonyms in the in the query semantics. When, you, when it comes to using all this information actually for SEO or search engine optimization, you will, you will need to use actually these type of understandings or these type of approaches to create or design your website because you can't directly create a website for only B2C because B2C or B2B, you will need to calculate all these possibilities and you will need to augment your, to your topical map. If Google infers a query in a different way and if they augment the meaning of the query, it means that you will need to augment your topical map too. You might even need to change some certain sections of your business model or business identity or source context. Because as I say in, in, in some of the previous videos, uh, and also in this in information responsiveness related uh, case study too. These things matter because in helpful content update announcement to Google site that actually who you are and why do you explain these things. So your identity and topic should be relevant to each other. If you change your if you, if you change the queries that you want to rank, it should be connected to your source or your identity. And to be able to provide that, you need to position your identity or the brand according to that as well. So I believe this was a quick video according to the others. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I have I tried to explain many things here uh, by going over these things. I will try to t put more videos soon. And as I say, probably this document has already been published or if it is not, I will publish it. I might publish it as a book too because it is already too long. And I don't know whether people will read it or not, but usually I write for myself. I can even tell that I take some of these videos actually for training some, some teammates uh, in a faster way. So I also share these things so that other people also can benefit them. So thank you for listening to me and I promise you that I will publish and launch the Semantic SEO course. But when 2000 people or three or 4000 people start to ask me questions, it will be so hard for me. So let me prepare you. Please watch these videos and read these SEO case studies and take care of yourself. Goodbye.